Okay. Okay, so Timo TV are taking on Triathai this June. It's all in partnership with Whoop, the personalised digital fitness and health coach that helps you unlock your inner potential. I was making the point that um, Timo TV is a wide variety of uh, mixed level of ability and one former professional athlete in you, Brian O'Driscoll. You are uh, also part of Team OTB for this, which gives you a slight unfair advantage, I would have to say, versus the rest of us. Unfair advantage also heaped major, major pressure on me to deliver. And as any ex-athlete would attest, you know, the competitive edge is always exists in you, but then you realize you took for granted all of the work that was done as a professional and how you're not willing to do that work as a non-professional or, or as a retired professional and so the expectation's still there but the delivery not so much see i would i would take that at face value uh, if if you like most professionals had let yourself go but clearly you know uh you're you're still training harder now than you were when you were actually an athlete <laughs> Do you know what? If triathlon was in the weight room, I'd give it a good go, right? <laughs> if it was thrown around a bit of tin, um, I'd, I'd stand a chance. But I haven't yet gotten on a bike. In fact, when I retired, I got all the gear. I got everything. And I have all of my cycling gear still in their boxes upstairs. <laughs> or at least I think they are somewhere in the house. Um, so I have to go and start learning how to ride a bike again. Uh, because that's the leg that I'm do that I'm going to do. Um, I can't do the whole try. I can't do the whole try because I'm an I'm an awful swimmer. And what was you mean? We would have a chance tearing. of beating you in the swimming. Is that is that is that what's oh, happened here? No, no, no. Here? Like I can't tell you. I, I, don't, I don't, Is it 250 meter swim? I literally don't know if I'd make that. They have the flotation. Uh, the the skin, oh, I would the skin need suits that. are like they kind of you can't. And it's I think it's also downstream. You know so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well. Okay. But uh, but I, I was I was tearing my calf a good bit running. Now I'm. I'm back running again, and um, I'm a bit more confident with it. But I, I, I'm, I feel as though I'm not going to tear my calf on the bike, and I'm not going to humiliate myself. Hopefully, uh, what is your fitness regime like? Um, I, I probably try try and train about five days a week. Realistically, um, I go to the gym most of the time. I've got a uh, a friend that's a uh, personal trainer and I train with him as his training partner and so he needs someone to motivate him and lift his weights so um, I go down and you know I have a pretty flexible diary that I can go down and kind of work um, into his schedule and into my own schedule and then what we do is we go in and lift I'm, I'm going to go down there now in 20 minutes time we're going to do I'm going to do a body part today um, probably um, back or or, or shoulders, um, and then I'll do some running, intermittent running in between. When I do those supersets, I'll do four sets of them, and then I'll do a four hundred and seventy meter run, which is a lap of a group of, of a housing estate um, outside his gym, just to get my cardio going. And uh, so it's high intensity and relatively short. Yeah, it's pretty high intensity. I try and work on 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 heart rate a lot of the time. It's it's easier to work on heart rate with um, when you're doing legs um, because again I'm not trying to lift crazy heavy I'm trying to it's it's all for kind of it's it's largely aesthetics is why I train it's not about trying to get power out, output or get stronger it's literally just maintenance and and to stop injury as well it's easier to do that on the on the heart rate on lower. Um, lower leg strength because you know trying to keep cardio going on upper body is very difficult you just can't lift the weights you're trying to lift whereas legs i did legs yesterday and as much as the run after legs when your your legs are full of blood is hard you can still manage it whereas if you're t taking short rest periods on lifting weights and you know if you're doing chest or whatever and you're lifting reasonably heavy you, you, your your failure just comes like that when you finished, did you do this straight away? Was this like the next week you were back into it or fairly soon afterwards, like a holiday, but like I'm going to keep doing this because otherwise I something will happen? Well, what I, I, I trained really hard for about six or seven months pretty immediately after it because I, I, I think it was Sexto said to me, I can't wait to see you in a year. You're going to be a <laughs> And I remember going, F you. And... Um, 
And so I trained pretty hard. And that was obviously summer, you know, coming into summer and then you train and then all of a sudden it gets dark and wet. And I was like, no, no one's, you know, I'm not training with anyone. Where's my motivation? And then I kind of tipped away for about a year, year and a half, just doing Pilates a couple of times a week. And I had this really bad redistribution of weight. I didn't put on too much weight, but it just, I went soft in all of the wrong places. And, um, and so I, I kind of cut it before it got away from me. And then I just made it part of what I do. And I, and now it's, it's kind of built into my regime. Like every, I, 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 I have it locked into my day. Like, and I build the rest of my day around. It's really important now, really important. That's the only way to do it, is to build it into your day. I, um, Because of this, I've uh, gone back swimming every day for the last couple of weeks, and mostly the gym I go to is around the corner from work. The pool has been completely empty when I've been there because it's kind of um, different times from everybody. But the other day, I went in, and there was a lot of people around, and I was kind of swimming around them. And next thing, a woman arrived and started playing music, and I'd walked into an aqua aerobic class. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I had to, I had to either like make a big public show of leaving, or join in. So I was doing the, you know, as uh, Cindy Lauper and girls just want to have fun, <laughs> was belting out around the place. I'm like, okay, so I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get fit for this. Do you enjoy it? Yeah, it was great, actually. It was like, once I got over the uh, absolute embarrassment of um, being the only person under 70 there, I was like, this is actually quite good. And and the whole fact that there are other people doing the same thing and somebody who's the boss telling you what to do, that was kind yeah. of a transformative moment where actually I think that I probably do need a bit of help when it comes to this. What about, what about the swimming part on your own? Do you find this boring, lonely, annoying, or do you actually... And, and, Listen, you never you never regret exercise, right? You always have the endorphin release at the end of it. But actually, the the going and getting into the pool and going and th- thought ahead, I've got a twenty minute or twenty five minute session ahead of me. Does that does that light you up, or does that give you? I like swimming and I, I like the swimming and cycling. I can't do running. I hate running. It's um, I had bad shins, but it was I find running boring and kind of uh, difficult. But I actually quite like swimming where no one's bothering you there's, it's just like there's nothing going on except you know trying to remember the count of how many of these lengths you've done um what do you think of when you're swimming uh like uh, absolutely everything uh sometimes right. or nothing but the number this is the first okay. one this is the second one and um and so there's like a, a meditative quality to that or there's like absolutely everything kind of uh you know that little bit before sleep where your brain is too active mm. Yeah, because that's why the, the long distance running part for me, I was always, it was always about speed and not long distance. And then I tried to, after, uh, into retirement, about three years into retirement, I tried to do a sub 20 minute 5K. Now that's really quick. It's very fast. And for someone that liked breaks in their physical exercise, that's not ideal to me. And I, And so I was doing it on a treadmill because... I needed to, the fear of being spat off the back of it to motivate me to stay me going strong. But I had to pack it in with over a minute still to go in it. I literally just couldn't get there. And like a minute in a 5K is like forever. Yeah. Um, and, and, and to going out on the road, you know, I'd start doing a couple of 5Ks in the road then. But it's the thought. It's that, it's what you're trying to think of. Think of everything and nothing, like you said. Um, it's it's boredom that gets me. That's why I like going to the gym. That's why I have a chat with Stefan, and you know we you know between sets we're having a conversation and we're pushing one another. Whereas it's just you and your thoughts and the road and a pool that just doesn't motivate or stimulate me in any way. That is the transformative thing that I've definitely learned this time. And the competition because we've done this before and I got mad into it uh, pre-pandemic. Um, and that definitely helped, but certainly I, it's fair to say I let myself go over the pandemic. One last thing, right? Um, the Patrick Mahomes, uh, they were they published his uh, heart rate data from his whoop after the there was a wild game where they won with the last possession against the the Bills, and it was like fifty something, forty something. His heart rate was lower when he had the ball than when he didn't have the ball, which everybody was like, "This is a bit strange, isn't it?" But I guess in retrospect, it's like athletes in control versus athletes out of control that's the mm. bit when their heart rate's getting away from them yeah yeah um i think you're you're in a yeah you are you're in a sense of comfort when you have um yeah when you have the ball or when you have when you're doing what you want to do versus when 
um, when you're watching someone else and you, you can't have an impact, particularly in a game like that, where it's you know, offense and defense, where he has to sit it out and watch you know, his teammates going and doing their job, at least in rugby, that you play on both sides of the ball, that you can have an impact on it. It's not special teams and so on. Um, so, yeah, I, I suppose in, in some ways I can understand that, but that also takes, particularly in very pressurized situations, it takes a unique person that's able to control their heart rate or someone that's, you know, emotionless in a, in a circumstance, knowing what the end result may or may be down to their decision. That's that's still significant. Yeah, it's really interesting. I just uh, found that little bit of a data point, um, one of those things that's, I guess it makes sense when you're that ice cold. So you're, you're telling me you're going to win the 20k cycle. Is that what I heard at the start of this? That's, that's what that's I'm the plan. Not. Yeah, listen, if you're not in to win, you're not, you're not, you're, you're wasting your time. Um, yeah, I think the other reason as well is to not do all three is because I'd humiliate myself in the swim and I'd leave myself way too much work in the cycle and the run. I just, you know, I thought if if I only take on one leg, well, like, I can blame it on the other two people in, in the, in, in, that are taking part in the team as well. So, provided I'm given a half decent chance on the bike ride, I think I can. The, the 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 concern for me is is the actual control. I know I know that I can go hard. I know that I can push myself because on a static bike I can go I can go and 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 do good numbers. But it's actually just making sure you don't crash. Yeah. So it's the control side, and that's why like I haven't been out on a bike yet. So I should probably think about doing that for what are we six weeks away? Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. I want to pull the finger out. I, I I have the shoes and all, but I don't know how to lock them into the into like the. Um, into the pedals. I think it's grand getting on, but getting off is the bit where you're like, uh, 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 and then you fall yeah, off the side. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just need, I need someone to come running over with a mattress every time I stop. Yeah, make sure we get some of that on video. We'll be, we'll all be happy with that. <laughs> Brian, good stuff. Good luck with the training. Thanks very much. Cheers. That's bye a bye. reminder. Team OTV taking on Triathigh this June. It's all in partnership with Whoop, the personalized digital fitness and health coach that helps you unlock your inner potential. It gives you great data on strain and recovery and sleep and um it, it literally tells you you should be going to bed now you should just you should think about going to bed and getting a little bit of rest uh, take it easy for yourself so um that's this week's update on our uh partaking of triathai um uh, thoughts and prayers for us if you want